always try to get a good examination, see what we're going to deal with um, throughout the, the dental cleaning. He's got a pretty good amount of tartar on, on his back teeth. Really don't see much on the, on the front teeth, a little bit on the canine teeth, the big fang teeth in the front. But this is the, this is the most common area where dogs get tartar is way back in the back. A lot of owners don't know that, um, and so they think their dog's teeth are clean, but when we get in here, we see, we see the, the nasty stuff. <laughs> uh, so we, and once, once we get to scaling here, um, so Sarah's using an instrument called a Hawkville uh, tartar forcep. She's gonna break um, these big chunks of plaque. She's gonna break them off physically. That just, it, it increases the, uh, the speed of which we can do these procedures. If we use a dental scaler or try to hand scale that, it would take us hours to get this stuff off. So these, these forceps she's using are specifically designed to break large chunks of tartar off quickly and uh, thus give us a good, a good uh, jump on the, on the procedure. Big, big chunks of stuff coming off of there. That's that's very therapeutic if you're cleaning them. <laughs> <laughs> you probably noticed too when she's cleaning, you're going to get a little bit of bleeding. That bleeding is caused from excessive gingivitis or inflammation of the gum tissue, and that's caused by that tartar that builds up. That's why we recommend annual dentals in all of our pets. Uh, particularly the smaller breed dogs, they develop that tartar much more quickly than, than our big guys, um, but uh, every dog needs it. And cats too. Don't really talk about that much, but we do need to do it in our cats. So what she's using now is called an ultrasonic scaler. Um, it's using sound waves. You can probably, uh, I don't know if you can hear it on the, on the video or not, but you can hear it with your ear. It sounds like a nails on a chalkboard. Um, essentially it's using little, little sound waves and vibrations to break up the tartar that's there. Um, that it's a, it's a rapid way to break up really dense, dense, uh, deposits like tartar and we can move through these dogs pretty quickly especially the bigger dogs we use ultrasonic on once sarah's done i'll go back through um, and do a, a exam after she gets well first off she'll do x-rays after she gets them scaled um, and then i can evaluate the x-rays while i'm doing my examination and during that I'll, I'll do some hand scaling with a, a hand instrument uh, so i can actually feel those little little deposits that you can't necessarily feel with an ultrasonic scaler. Really quick short breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the hydro. So he's kind of doing this panting thing. Uh, Kelsey, our TA, just uh, let me know. So one of the pre-meds that we give is called, um, it, it can cause those kind of short, shallow breaths. Sometimes with those, we just need to watch the oxygen, make sure it's not falling. If he's, if he's regular, if he's not responsive, what's, what uh, Sarah's doing, not causing any kind of response, we'll just allow him to, to breathe that way. Um, otherwise, if we need to, we can go ahead and give him some deep, deeper breaths with the machine and ventilate him a little bit manually. And that can often drive that pant response down a little bit if it's becoming too cumbersome to work around. But as long as he's not responsive, it's always better to keep him lighter than, than deeper. So that's, that's the key, it's kind of walking that tightrope of, of um, you know, being able to do what we need to do without getting them too deep. Just let me know if he starts to get blinky or... Yeah, we shouldn't say anything. While the technician is scaling, um, 
they will let us know if they see any major problems on any major teeth or any, any issues with the gum line. If there's any growths that shouldn't be there that, that are there, they'll kind of call those out real time as they see them. And then when I go back through, I'll exam. You notice where Sarah is scaling right now is on the inside of those arcades of teeth. Uh, that is something that's going to be pretty near impossible to do without anesthesia, uh, with a big, big tongue like Levi's got, and just uh, I mean, you saw kind of how he was wiggling just, just putting the IV in. You can imagine having a sharp instrument in a in a large dog's mouth awake um, without any kind of sedation or anesthesia you're just not going to be able to do that um, even w even at the level that he was sedated with the pre-anesthetic he's still going to fight he's still going to he's still going to move and you're not going to get a good clean scale you're always going to leave something there and you're you very real possibility of causing damage with a sharp instrument or scaling instrument so we do not recommend, and the, the uh, Veterinary Dental Society, the Academy, they do not recommend that non-anesthetic dental be done. Um, it just, it's, just, uh, it's, it's just not a good practice to do. Now that's not to say that we don't recommend brushing dog's teeth, that's not the same thing. So at-home dental care and brushing dog's teeth is definitely recommended. If you can do that every day, it'll help prevent that tartar from building up in the first place. And so, uh, you know, you're going to use a soft bristle, a bristle brush to do that, and it's going to, going to really, really prolong the time within dent, uh, uh, between dentals, and really, really can help, particularly in our small patients.